Welcome back everybody and welcome to the Jeep Man King channel. I'm out in my garage doing a little bit of work and I want to bring you guys along for those that like to deal with the Cummins 6BT and the Cummins 4BT engines. And I thought I'd just bring you along and kind of show you something that may help you in your project is basically we're going to set the time on this pump. And it's very simple and I'm just going to go over a few things with you. That way, if you're in a bind or say for some reason that you buy an injection pump that from somebody not actually on the engine and you're going to be actually replacing it on your engine, it's going to be pretty simple. And I'm just going to take you through the process and what I do. You shouldn't have any issues starting your engine. So let's check this out. All right. <clears throat> so here's the injection pump on a Cummins 4B team. And you can tell just by the injection pump right here is, and here's your delivery valves. You've got four of them. These is what sends fuel through your injector lines and then directly to the injectors themselves. Now, <clears throat> a 6BT is gonna have six of these delivery valves. Basically, same style pump, looks the same on the VE pump. This is exactly what yours is gonna look like. Um, now there are, different styles of VE pump. They're called like a govern pump. A lot of times you'll find them on wood chippers, generators, um, and some other equipment that basically it's not made to um, have a foot throttle put on there. Um, basically, you're trying to keep the same RPM. Now, you can use those pumps on road use. You really can if you want to put it in a Jeep, truck, whatever. It's almost like kind of having cruise control uh, once you give it the throttle, um, it's, you can just hold your foot there, and once it receives those RPMs, if it drops RPMs, it automatically, since it's a govern, it's going to pick it back up and put you right back there at those RPMs that you need to be. Check your pump gear. It's going to mount right here. You've got a keyway right there as well, okay? And as you look really close, you're going to see a line right here on the case. If you can see that right there, that is a stamped line from the manufacturer right there, okay? This keyway needs to line up directly to that, okay? What that does is that's gonna put your pump in time and whenever you put your gear on, okay? Because your gear, if you got your front cover off of your engine, then it's pretty easy, but right now, my cover is, my front cover is on my engine, but my gear is still inside the cover, okay? I took this off and I slid this pump out the back and my gear is still in place. But what's important is that gear has a timing mark on it as well. That timing mark on that outside of that gear is gonna match up with your other gears for your cam and such inside the front cover of your Cummins, okay? Main thing is, is to, Number one, when you put this back on, make sure that this keyway does not come out, okay? It can easily come out, and it may fall down in your cover. As you can see, it's pretty small, all right? It's a little tight because I've actually set this pump to time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to mess it all up and reset it so you guys can see exactly what to do, okay? Let me take this nut and washer off here. Very important, make sure you put this lock washer back in there too when you're gonna set your time, all right? Now, number one, this keyway is gonna be in there just like this. And you're gonna have to slide this pump in through the holes on the back side of the cover towards the front of the engine, all right? And when you do that, make sure that you have this keyway push down just like this. If you can see the difference there. See how the front of that key is, is slanted towards this because your gear is gonna slide on just like this. If this isn't slanted down, when you go to either push this pump in or push the gear on, whichever uh, way you're gonna do it, if you get your front cover off or not, your, your gear is gonna slide on the here and you want to kind of slide up on here and then it will rotate this key down and make it level and go on nice and tight, okay? If this key is just like this 
and you go to push your gear on or like this I'm going to be pushing this into the back side of my case my front cover this is going to hit the back side of the gear this is going to come off all right and when it comes off guess what's going to happen it's going to fall down in the cover and then you have to try to find it with a magnet okay so just make sure you you make that to where it's facing downward before you stick it in and you should be good to go okay now if you lose this if you lose it inside the case your timing gear cover most likely it's going to fall down and there's a little there's a little spot in there like soleil okay don't don't freak out about it just get a magnet in there and try to fish it out it'll come out whatever you do do not try to start the engine with this not recovered if you do it'll go in between gears and you're gonna have some serious problems okay all right so let's take a look at <clears throat> the back side here where your delivery valves is okay now this is really very 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 important um i resealed this ve pump i put all new um, o-rings in the head um, i put a new shaft seal here okay i cleaned out the pump I also put a 3,000 RPM governor spring in here as well, and I got it cleaned out very good. Had a lot of uh, deposits in there, but everything looks good in there. Uh, something that you need to pay attention to as well, let me just go over this while I'm, I'm doing this. This is what you're going to see on the side of the engine, just like this, okay? It's actually going to be pointed down a little bit just like this, okay? Um, is right here something that... A lot of times is just overlooked this can be your return banjo boat right here okay this banjo boat bolt is very important because the fact that there is a tiny 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 little hole right there I don't know if you guys can see that but this was actually plugged solid all right it was completely plugged up and all you do is blow air through this side. And if air is not coming out of the little bleed hole, it's plugged up in there. All right. It took me about an hour to get that cleaned out. It was so plugged up. Um, and what you can use with that is if you break off a piece of like a wire brush, um, if it's a long enough wire, it'll go in there and, and get it taken care of. I just use a torch tip cleaner for just go to any type of your welding supply stores and you get a torch tip, tip cleaner and it has some tiny 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 little holes that you can or wires that you can actually get in there and clean those out really good so something to look into because listen this pump will actually pressurize itself all right Inside here, there's some veins that'll actually pull fuel in, pressurize the case, all right? Because you need it completely pressurized with fuel, very low PSI, but there's enough in there to pressurize it. Any excess of air that's in this needs to come out of this right here. But if this is plugged up, you're gonna have air in here. If you've got air in here, guess what? You're gonna have trouble with your head pressure and building pressure to send diesel fluid, diesel fuel to your injectors, okay? If you've got air in your system in a diesel engine and you're trying to start it, you're gonna have issues. Why is that? Number one, liquid does not compress, okay? Think about it. What do they use in hydraulics? They use liquid. Liquid will not compress, all right? Air will compress. So as this is trying to, to build pressure to send diesel fuel to your injectors to fire them, okay, if you've got air in your system, that fluid will move, but that air compresses, and then you don't have the right PSI to trigger your injector. So important thing, make sure that this is cleaned out. That way you can push out all the air out of your injector pump and provide enough diesel fuel to fire your injectors okay 
So very, very, very important. That's all I can tell you. Very important. Make sure this is good and make sure you don't have any uh, uh, airline links as well on the suction side to actually pull more air into this VE pump, okay? All right, so let's look at the delivery valves on your injection pump. Number one, on the Cummins, and I'm, I can almost guarantee, but I don't know for sure, but the 6BT, um, these on the 4BT are torqued down to 30 foot-pounds. This is critical, okay? If you don't get 30 foot-pounds on each one of these delivery valves, you're going to have some issues, okay? Now, see that center bolt right there that is not your standard you know six point bolt head it is a specialty bolt that goes in there and then you've got the center bolt right here this is a regular six point regular center bolt this one here the bigger one is not you have to get on ebay or go somewhere and find a socket that will fit this okay this is what i call the the piston underneath this you've got a piston and it's a, it's a long shaft about like this and it rotates okay as it comes up it compresses the diesel fuel as it goes back it, it rotates compresses diesel fuel and it, as it does that as it rotates around it will send fuel to each one of these delivery valves as it's rotating and plunging all at the same time this bolt right here has to be torqued down to 54 foot-pounds, okay? If you don't have that 54 foot-pounds, you're not going to have the clearance that you need that when this piston, this plunger comes up and compresses that fuel, if it doesn't have the right clearance, if that clearance is too big, you're not going to build the, the correct PSI to send fuel down your injector lines up to your injectors, okay? This right here, you can actually... Um, you, this right here, you can take this out and you can actually put a dial indicator in there to actually find the true 100% top dead center on your injection pump, okay? But the way I'm going to show you, you will be able to get your truck running and then you can actually uh, rotate your pump with these slotted holes right here. You've got a slotted hole there slotted hole there and a slotted hole here okay that's why you can actually rotate this a little bit while it's on your engine while the truck is uh, running you can actually shut the truck off loosen these up and and advance the timing just a little bit by going clockwise okay so that right there that's the pure basics and uh Let's move over to the, the vise here, and I'm going to take you through the process of timing this. All right, let's look at this right here. This bolt right here is very, very important as well. What does it do? Number one, this bolt is tight right now, okay? I've got it tight. That bolt goes through the case and pushes on this shaft. And what that's going to do is... It keeps it from moving so once we get this timed like it is right now because this keyway is lined up with the mark on the case this pump is timed okay now what you don't have to worry about is one full revolution of this shaft will fire all four cylinders on this come in 4bt all right on a 6bt same thing one complete rotation 360 degrees will fire all six injectors on a 6BT. So it's real simple. Um, all you have to do is put this in a vise, and that's what we're going to do, and we're going to take you through the process right now. All right, so we're looking at the front of the pump where the main shaft goes through. Now, see the keyway there? See how it's lined up with that mark right there? That's exactly what you're looking for, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this locking bolt right here. This is the bolt that goes through and actually locks the shaft, keeps this from moving. And you'll see what happens as soon as I loosen that. So we'll, we'll watch that. All right, I'm getting ready to loosen this locking bolt. 
Just keep it on that shaft. See the shaft move? All right. What's important is, as you can see, by loosening up that, that uh, locking bolt right here, it allowed the shaft to turn. Now, guess what? It's out of time. So now I'm gonna take you through the process of getting it timed again. All right, so it's out of time, as you can see. Keyway is not lined up with the mark on the shaft on the housing. What we're doing is we're just taking our, our nut and our lock washer that holds our gear on. And we're gonna get this tightened up, okay? And we're gonna turn it. Get this tightened up. And this is what's gonna happen when you, say, say this gear is, let's just rotate it around. Say your shaft is right here. The keyway is right over here. Don't worry about it. You're, it's going to be easy. So make sure this is loose, though. That's where we're at, okay? And all we're going to do is rotate this around. When you rotate this around, you're going to hear a pop. Hear the pop? All that is is your cam inside your pump here. It's actually, it, it's got, it's cam. So it's going to be spring tension, pop, spring tension, pop. That's all normal. Don't worry about that. You're... We're gonna bring it back around. Okay, now we're getting really close now. Okay, now all I'm gonna do is rotate this just a tad bit. All right, this has got pressure on it because why? I'm holding the cam in the pressure uh, setting. Now all I have to do is reach up here with my other hand and we'll tighten up this tension bolt right here, all right? So, I'm going to try to do that one-handed. Because I've got the other hand on the camera. All right. So far, so good. And we'll double-check this. All right. Here we go. Let's get this bad boy lined up here. Okay. I'm going to tighten it up right there. I'm putting some tight tension on that locking bolt. If you guys can see that, let me zoom in here. That's it guys, just like that. Okay, so if I did that one-handed, I know that you can do it as well, okay? Zoom back out here. And guys, that's it. That is all you have to do to time this. This pump is ready to go in. Now, like I said, pay attention. You have to back this nut off. Make sure this key keyway stays in place when it's pushed onto the gear. Okay? And then that's it. It's that simple. All right, one more thing. Once you actually get the pump in your vehicle and it's mounted in the cover, you've got your cam you're not your cam gear, but your fuel pump gear on, you've got this torque down to the proper spec. It's very important then, once you have all that, then you can finally back this bolt off, okay? Listen, if you don't back this bolt off and you try to start your truck, okay, this is gonna turn. Guess what? This bolt is against this shaft and you're gonna have metal pieces going all over the place inside your pump. So trust me when I tell you this, very, very important. Once you get it all set and everything's ready to roll, back this off, okay? Now, this little piece goes right here, okay? As you back this bolt off, it's going to slide up underneath the shoulder of this bolt, which is right here, and it's going to lay right in here in this groove, okay? Once that's backed out, this is in place, then go back and then tighten this down, okay? This is a spacer. All you're doing is, is you're keeping this bolt from riding on your shaft. So that's why they put this spacer in here. If you don't have a spacer, you need to come up with another spacer, okay? You either need to get some bigger washers to put there to hold that back because you need to tighten this bolt back down once everything is free here, okay? All this does, it keeps it from digging into your shaft while your engine's running. And trust me, your pump will not last long with all the metal shavings especially going to your injectors, whatever comes out of the pump. Pretty much that simple.
So good luck with your projects out there. And if you haven't already, check out my Jeep Man King channel. I got a 19 video series of the Cummins 4BT. And if you're a stepdad out there, a father or grandpa, teach some young man how to work on his own stuff. And I think that's something that's so important. And uh, lessons learned at a young age, let me tell you, will take them through life and will give them confidence to do whatever they need to do if they put their mind to it. And most importantly, don't give up. So God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.